find that? Well, I've been going around quite a lot in, around the world, uh, sometimes teaching te uh, students myself, sometimes teaching teachers to teach their students. And a uh, game, especially like a multiplayer game, tends to be a really natural platform where some of the students that are very into that game, they know that game already very well, they are the ones acting like a co-teacher, helping other students you know, thrive in that game uh, whenever they have problems. That's always something that teachers should encourage them to do. Uh, but what we have seen is that uh, you know, one student uh, helps each other, usually that's the student that is the most silent in the class, typically the student that is not the top tier student uh, from the teacher point of view, and now that student is helping all, everybody else in, the, in his team or her team to really like get the game built, whatever, you know, if we're talking about a sandbox game, building game, like build like cool structures, and, and typically when it comes to uh, like differentiation, meaning that uh, one student is lower level, one student is a higher level, it, games provide a context where it's very easy for the students to, okay, you are good at math, okay, figure out this math problem when we are doing this volume uh, calculation thing, I'm going to build the walls, or I'm going to, you know, prepare the site while you are doing that. And then uh, when the story moves on, they might be, you know, running around the class and all, all together, measuring things and like building together and everybody's getting up to speed. So I think that well, that's the long answer to the question and the short answer would be that, uh, yes, absolutely. and and really games differentiate the learning experience really well. What, so I, I guess uh, it all comes down to scripting. And with scripting, I mean that, let's say five plus three equals is a very scripted task. Of course, that doesn't really, that's the same for every single student. Now we can have a, uh, also a, a task where there is equals five and everything else is blank. That would allow the child who is good at uh, multiplication, the child who is good at addition, to then come up with different uh, answers. And with, with games, uh, I would, what I like to encourage teachers to do, especially when we are talking about skills development, is that leave as much open as possible, set the stage in a way that, okay, today we are building a commercial district in the city building game. Now, uh, there might be some criteria, there has to be 20,000 people, there has to be no traffic jams, and after that, every single student, hopefully in groups, can come up with their own, own solutions, how that would work out. And I'm 100% that every solution would look different and every single one would look cool. Well, I think it all depends on what we want to achieve. Uh, if, if it's a more educational game about uh, just rehearsing or like, or practicing something, let's say just building up the routine for multiplication. I would say that doing it alone is, is best. Uh, and it also most sort of measurable from the teacher point of view that, okay, now I know where every single student is. But then when you are talking about skills development, of course, uh, in that context, multiplayer becomes very valuable because now the problem solving, critical thinking and uh, creativity is not only there, but it's uh, in the collaboration format, where all the decisions when it comes to these creative solutions need to be also discussed with the, with the other team members. So I would say that, of course, depends on what you want to teach, uh, but uh, both have their uses, but definitely when it comes to skills development, you know, building the you know, workforce that we nowadays need in the, in the companies, multiplayer games excel in that. I think so, um, and I've seen that being very successful. Typically the challenge with that is that every single child or student needs to have you know, a reasonably good device and also internet connection. So that sometimes leads to this like inequality uh, situation where not all the students can uh, participate. Uh, let's say if there's a school that has one-to-one -one deployment, that every single kid has a you know, PC laptop, then of course, like absolutely, because you can 100% know that every single child can use this and participate, and then it works really well. It typically is like a technical problem rather than pedagogical problem. Well, one would of course hope that they would be more media literate when it comes to games. Um, so they would know the frustration and the challenges and the 
uh, and you know the feel of I want to play this game. I'm I'm sort of this uh, really cool spot in the game. I want to keep playing that 15 more minutes. Uh, so I hope that this generation understands that better. And at the same time, I hope that this generation who has played and uh, probably wanted their parents to be part of their gameplay and be interested in what they are doing, I really hope that they can stop their game, their own game, I mean the adults, uh, or they can just take a break from whatever they have been doing and then talk with their child and like participate. Because I really think that the participation is like the biggest uh, tool, the best tool for you know, understanding that media, understanding what goes on in, in the child's head and also you know, be more media literate when it comes to games.